52-year-old Madam To Agi is just one of the 400,000 workers annually who benefits from Workfare. Madam To received some $800 worth in Workfare Income Supplement or WIS for her work done in 2010. Together with her Training Commitment Award of $400 for her participation in a WSQ in FMB service and about $400 worth in Workfare Special Bonus, she received about $1,600 in Workfare altogether. And that's not all. Thanks to her training certificate, her monthly pay rose by some $300 in 2010. Workfare is a key pillar of the government's strategy to enable inclusive growth for all. Through Workfare Income Supplement, or WIS, workers' incomes are supplemented as long as they work through government top-ups so that they can benefit from the country's economic growth. Through the Workfare Training Support, or WTS, scheme, low-wage and low-skilled workers go for training and upgrading to arm themselves with new skills for better-paying and higher-value jobs so that they can move out of the low-wage income bracket. We do recognise that there will be a group of Singaporeans, a small group of Singaporeans, that may have greater challenges in keeping up with the pace of change, especially as a result of globalisation. And this group of uh, low-income, low-skilled workers, uh, they face significant challenges in upgrading their skills. They may be lacking in basic education levels. They may have uh, difficulties in even proficiency in languages. Uh, they may have other challenges in employment. And this is the group of uh, low-wage, low-skilled workers that we need to ensure that they are not left behind. And through Workfare, we try to encourage them to continue to work as well as encourage them to go for upgrading so that they can pursue better jobs. And that is the way to solve the problem at a fundamental level. So is Workfare better than having a minimum wage to help low-wage workers? The problem with minimum wage is that you set it too low it won't solve the problem for the low-wage workers. If we sell it too high, many low-wage workers will lose their jobs to become no-wage workers. Instead of pursuing the concept of a minimum wage, we pursue the concept of a minimum skill. We require the employers to equip our workers to acquire a certain level of skill, and over time, we help them to upgrade their skills. So in this way, Workers are able to keep, the lowest workers are able to keep their jobs at the same time enjoy higher income through Workfare Income Supplement and at the same time able to upgrade their skill through the Workfare Training Scheme. So in this way, we hope that many of the lowest workers of today do not have to continue to be lowest workers of tomorrow. Minimum wage also discourages upgrading because their income is guaranteed by the minimum wage, so there's no incentive for them to upgrade. And if they don't upgrade, the minimum wage will become their maximum wage. And lastly, minimum wage also adds cost to the work employers without the commensurate increase in productivity. And if employers cannot pass on this cost, they might move out of Singapore and we lose jobs altogether. And if they can pass on the cost to consumers, then Singapore consumers at large will have a better cost. Through Workfare, the government will push its inclusive growth strategy to ensure no one is left behind.